Alrighty then, mic check, mic check. Welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is time for a quick rundown. It is Mentorship Monday. Welcome aboard. Let me crank that music down there. Make sure you're following us over here on Facebook and skip on that Twitter. Go over there to Instagram and here on YouTube. Tonight's topic, we're going to talk about the, what are we doing? MacV filtering, specifically advanced level MacV filtering decisions. Buckle up here tonight. Make sure you've got your notepads. We're going to cover a lot of things tonight. A lot of things that some folks are doing a little bit wrong with Algobox. Make sure you've got this filtering down. Tonight, you are going to do it. Let's do it. Alrighty, then let's come on down here to our training window. Hopefully you guys should be able to see. Let's see what screen is this. Yes. Alright, so bottom left hand corner. So again, topic tonight, specifically around that Mac V. So center chart right up here. Let's uh let's make this a little bit big here tonight, because we want to focus in on what's going on inside of the old Mac V. Not to be confused with Mac D. A lot of people do get that confused. We are using that indicator, but we have a very specific way that we use those. I think that's probably about good right there. Let's hit that fix it button and let's see what we can do here. Now, uh, going backwards, if you have uh, looked at our previous video around the MACV strategy, you probably saw an older video. Again, this is what I call legacy. Um, MACV, again, the stuff that's in here does apply, but I call it legacy because we did not have all the tools that we had back when this was originally created. We are enhancing what we have already done. So don't write off what was already there. This is specifically about using the MACV for an entry, but tonight we're going to talk about filtering for other strategies. So hang tight with that. Do make sure you check that one out in our proper order, but this is important because I've had a lot of people on, my, on the calls that we're doing with folks and we do our mentorship calls. Um, you know, every 40 days you're scheduling a call with me if you're getting into your first 120 days with our program. So uh, we are answering some questions that we have had quite a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the music here. That way if somebody wants to speed up this video, if I'm talking too slow, go ahead and hit that, you know, 1.5X, 1.75, or hey, when, let me sound like a chipmunk, drive it all the way up there to 2X there on YouTube. Um, but we are going to try to make sure that we digest what is important here. So I'm gonna squeeze this down here just a little bit. Um, so remember, MACV filtering. Let me start back real quick with when you are about to enter into a position, you should be starting at the top left-hand corner. If you're using our default setup, this is going to be the tide chart in the top left. Remember, there are multiple time frames here. This up here is always going to be an 89 range chart. And if you don't know about these things, if you are new with us, go back and watch the videos. You will catch up and know what these are. Make sure you get through lessons one through six. Those should be down in the description of this video down below. 89 range, then we're looking down right here. This is going to be... Um, this is our wave chart. So we got tide, thinking about uh, water. Like out the ocean, you got the tide, rising tides, raise all boats type of scenario, if it's going down, etc. Now the wave, think about a big wave coming up out of the tide, okay? Secondary chart time frame that we're looking at is the wave. That is this one right here. This one can be adjustable. I'm not going to tell you what specifically that range is. On this chart right now, it's 24 range, but this adjusts weekly because we do our optimization process. Make sure you have updated this chart. This is what feeds your other charts. If you're using Algobox, update this based on in our room. Let me show you guys where you guys can find that. If you are inside of our room, we do post it in the public chat, but if you are one of our premium members, uh, you can come down here to premium members only, and there is typically less um, chatter going on here, so easier to find those. Here is the latest, what that looks like. This is the grid and the column that you're looking for right here to update those charts. So making sure that you have that done first, some of those prerequisites before you start getting into a trade, but we are looking from top left, then we start to move our eyeballs down to the wave, then we're kind of, I think of this as the filter. Well, this is the Mac V filter right here, okay? Picture passing through this zone, all right? In order to get go and go over here and be able to press the buy market, sell market, bid ask, before you're gonna enter in onto any trade, you've got to pass through that filter, okay? That's the way you think of it mentally, okay? We're gonna pass through and we're gonna focus on this filter here tonight before we enter in on anything like a um, HMD or a headshot or a two finger salute. Real two finger salute really kind of comes back right here, but you are gonna be looking for pinpoint entry over here on a double dot entry or one of those more pinpoint entry locations, maybe a timing shift on a larger king, etc. okay? So on that filter, here we are. We are maximizing this middle chart, that filter. We want to talk about 
some of the gotchas that people um, run into. You know, we're gonna try to keep this short here tonight. This is not gonna be an all-encompassing video, so make sure you watch the other videos, especially lessons one through six. Please, please, folks, I have people even asking today some very basic questions about the dots again, and these are from some mentor uh, level, mentors inside of our crew. You know, some folks who have been around our crew for quite some time that, you know, a lot of people learn from, but even, even some of those folks, like maybe you forget some of those things or you didn't take them in your notes, but all of that information is in those core lessons one through six. You've got to almost, you have to have memorized every item in there. I'm just trying to reiterate that right now because anybody who has any kind of scenario where they're um, you know, off, it's typically because they're literally just missing one thing that they didn't realize was already there in front of them. So take that note. All right, beating that dead horse, here we go. So on a Mac V filter, we are always looking at the latest, the most recent, vertical line okay so right now everybody should be able to tell right here that our latest vertical line on this mac v chart is has printed red okay no secrets here that's a red line okay so it's as simple as this if it's red oops where's my okay we're red right there looking for a short that's it so simple right so simple, no problem. So if it's green, we're looking for a long, no problem. Okay, but we're gonna talk about the advanced level stuff here tonight, okay? And again, we're gonna try to keep it short. All I want you to know are the more difficult things. Like, here we go, I can see one right here. What do we do when this green, like let's say that this one wasn't here previously, and right here we were on this green vertical line right here. That would mean that everything to the right of this, you should be looking for a long, correct? You should know that because it's green, so we're looking for a long. But what are our rules? Remember, eight bars. Okay, what is the eight bar rule? Okay, if you don't know what the eight bar rule is, go back and watch the original MacV, MacV video. Hold on one second, folks. Got to get this one. Alrighty then, uh, we are back here. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so the eight bar rule, um, you should have gotten this from the original Mac V video, but we are it's as simple as we are looking for the eighth bar. We need eight bars to have created themselves past that vertical in order for it to be validated as the color. Now, all that to be said. So if we're green, Okay, there it is. If we are officially green, if our meaning long, right? If we are, if our bias is gonna be long, then we've gotta be past the green vertical and eight bars must have passed, which means if we have just turned green right now, then I do not want to immediately be thinking my bias is the new color. Now, these are the things that, again, in this advanced level stuff here tonight that we're gonna be covering. Uh, I'm gonna give the rules first, and I'm gonna go through example after example after example. Put your questions down in the comments below if there's anything unclear. And of course, if you wanna see the uh, another topic in another video, put that down in the comments as well, and we will hit that topic on the next video. If anything is ever unclear, make sure you put that down in the comments below. So uh, on, this, on this one right here, this is a little bit tricky. So do we have eight bars? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this red bar showed up on the seventh bar. Okay, so we should not have, in a space that's this short, from here to here, right, by short is um, overused, in this minor, uh, small amount of space here, there was no bias. You guys all follow that. Between here and here, you should have had no bias, right? Maybe we could color this yellow, okay? Because we have no long, no green bias in this space, okay? Let's go through some more examples. I think it'll help if we just hit example after example now that you kind of know the rules, okay? And then we're gonna do things like what happens if the bars land them right on top of each other and uh, some others like, well, what happens if it flips one color then flips back? This is kind of a good, um, is this a good example here? So we went uh, green here. Let's look at this one. 
So um, from red, we originally read on this side, okay? Red, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So right about here, that's your eighth bar. This thing starts to move up after that. Maybe we got a red signal in here somewhere, but we don't see it on this time frame. If we had gotten one in the lower time frame, maybe we start to look for a short here. We're not just automatically entering in for a short, but this entire area is not considered short bias until eight bars, right? Everybody should get that by now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right there. Okay, that bar is a decision bar. So if we got a short somewhere there on the lower time frames on our algo bars, if we got it on the ones, threes, the fives, the eights, we can go ahead and take that because we've got our bias in check based on the, the Mac V filter. Okay, so here, no problem. So we come up here and now we have shifted to green. So now a lot of people think this, as soon as this green vertical shows up, that they're instantaneously, now my bias is becoming long. Okay. That's not correct. So on the very first bar, I am not looking to get long. My bias has not changed. Okay. We've got to wait eight bars to, to reassure ourselves that we have that long bias. Okay. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right there, that bar right there, that is our eighth bar right there. Nice spot. Now, if on, that's probably, oh, I bet that was a great set up earlier today. I'm going to look at the lower time frames to see if that is the case. But that bar right there, we're looking at our lower time frames. If we had gotten a long entry right there, it could be anything. It could be an HMD. This could be a double dot. This could be a dot on a large or king timing. This could be a timing shift. It could be a cross uh, harmonic. All of our entry point locations that we've got, um, we can enter in after that eighth bar with our bias. Okay, so our bias has shifted. There we go, we've got space up and up. Now, just because, let's say that we had gotten into a trade right here on this eighth bar, based on the lower time frames. hope you guys get that. Like I know this is why I say some of my videos have to end up becoming longer because I feel like there's so much more to explain here, but to try to cut to the chase on just the stuff on the MACV filtering that a lot of people have been asking about, I want you to get these points. If you've entered in on this position, but now we turn red right here. Some people think, oh, we went red, I'm immediately closing the position. Not correct. Okay, not correct. If you have an open position and you are looking for a continuation, we are gonna still hold this position through if we get a red bar. Not until this remains red for eight bars are we really even concerned with this having shifted into a new bias. And interestingly enough, what did we get? After one, two, on the third bar, this immediately flips back green. Okay, so now the question is, some people have asked this, what happens if, so here we obviously know that we have a green bias, no problem, okay? Because we have we have our green vertical, we're eight bars in, no problem. But this is where stuff gets tricky and this is what I want our focus to be on to answer these questions tonight. So what do I do inside here? So when we first turn red, again, we're not really changing our bias or being concerned. If we have an open position, we're still trying to hold that position out on our runners in this scenario. And again, we're gonna exit where? We're looking for a nice red signal like this. So this red PRZ up here would have been a great target if we had entered in here. You guys should be able to see on a higher time frame, we're exiting up there. And remember, these bars are 13, point, 13 ticks a piece. Let's just round down to 10. Let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's almost, uh, it's at least 50 plus ticks up there, even getting in slow if this is a hold on the entry on the eight lower time frame and you exit on this position right here. Doesn't look like much, but that's 50 ticks, folks. And if you've been trading futures, you know that is a very, very big, big trade. Okay, so, but focusing in right here on this spot, this is where it gets tricky. First, when this flipped red, do we flip this red bias? Obviously no, right? One, two, three, three bars turns green. So, does this mean that our bias is still green? That's the question. Pop quiz, okay? Think about this. When this went red back to green, because previously we were green, which we know, right? This entire space was green. But once we went red, then flipped back to green, the question is, is this now considered green bias? Pop quiz, think about it. What do you think? Maybe put your answer down in the comments below if we're not doing this as live stream here tonight. Um, what do you think? Is this now considered green bias? We went green, we quickly went red, which we said really didn't count, and we flipped back to green. So is this now considered back to be green bias? Should we be looking for longs here? 
The answer, no. Now, I, whoops, I just hit the wrong button. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was trying to put a big no with an exclamation mark. Uh, but I ended up uh, hitting the other button there. No, the answer is no. Now you might be you might be surprised by that. There are a lot of people who are surprised by that. This is why I want to drive this home because this has happened to many folks, and it's logical. What you're seeing, saying to yourself, what you're thinking there is logical. So we totally get it. It's why I want to drive this home because it's not logical. What ends up happening is this. But once I tell you the answer to this, then you're going to realize actually it is quite quite logical. Here we go. So we are green bias, we've got our space, which again, we're trying to catch our bias for whether or not we are trending and what's our direction, we are trending long as we've gotten this extra space, this is good news for ourselves, right? So we are traversing through the green, we punch the red, now we are literally in a we don't know state, okay? Once that red goes, now as far as a continuation, I can hold a continuation, but question, can I initiate, should I, okay, you can, anybody can press the button. So let's go, should I initiate a position long This isn't as hard a question as that last one, okay? Not as tricky here. The answer should be obvious is no, okay? Once we get here and we punch this red, if I get a perfect setup on the lower time frame, you know, look, can I? Absolutely. Should I? No. We need to start thinking as soon as we start to see an opposing color scenario here, um, I'm not really looking to initiate. Remember the key word here, initiate a position back to the long side again. No, the best place to play positions, folks, is when you have, and you know this, you see this nice gapping space. Look at this beautiful spacing in between these. Lots of space here. These are the places we want to initiate positions. Okay, we get lots of great trades in these zones. When do we not? Everybody defines these as chop zones. Our system is very, very good at detecting and showing you when the chop zone is gonna show it, folks. This is why I want to reiterate this to you because it's so important if you catch this one thing, you're you're just set okay you are completely set if you're able to do this so right here when this starts to happen we are gonna we are gonna chop okay what people call the chop zone and things and we're just gonna lose our edge okay there are still good trades that can show up in these areas it's just if you're gonna be specifically focusing and filtering your trades folks especially or if you're, you're kind of starting to struggle if you just follow these very simple rules I will tell you this will in like this will increase your level of confidence in every trade that you take by this simple thing. It's why I tell you guys to put all the trades that we take through this MACV filter for our stuff, every trade, you know, if possible. Again, there are things that are outside of that, like the two finger salute. There are exceptions to that on reversal plays. But if you are just doing these things, folks, it will be huge. So it's why I'm driving it home because I've seen so many. I get on calls to folks and they tell me these things and they say what I just said earlier, where they believe that if they're going green on one side, totally makes sense. We go to red. Then we go back to green, they think this is green. It's not. What we are starting to indicate, folks, is this, okay? Remember Christmas? Oh, did I hit the wrong button again? I'm not doing too good tonight, anyway. Let's try that again. This button, this button. You can tell I'm rusty, I haven't done, haven't done the videos in a while. All right, this is supposed to be exclamation marks. All right, one more time. So Christmas, folks, oh, everybody loves Christmas. All right, what are we looking for? We're keeping our eye out, okay? Looking for Christmas, all right, look for it. What do you see? If you see red and green, you know, we all, we all love us some Christmas, okay? Beautiful colored lights. But when it's Christmas, okay, we're, we're gonna be wanting to slow down things, all right? We don't wanna be working. Guys, you get it? Ladies, you get it? Christmas time, we're not working, okay? We wanna take some time off around Christmas, focus on the family type of scenarios, you get me? So you see the Christmas lights show, look at, that's what you should see right here, okay? If you see, we start to see red, green, real close to each other, red, green, this thing will start to get real tight. I'll show you guys an example here in a second. But as soon as you see two of these close together, you start to realize Christmas is here, just take your bias off, that's all, okay? Do not think, well, I need to flip back my bias. This does not flip back your bias. That's what I was trying to get hold. Now, it took me, uh, what are we at, uh, 18 minutes to, t to tell you guys that, uh, including the phone call. 
hopefully this drives this part home. Let's go through some other examples though. You are looking out for Christmas. Red, green, red, green. Here we go. Let's go through. Now you should know. Okay. Let's go back. Oh, look at this. Well, it's obvious in hindsight, right? You're going to say, oh, Vinny, well, that's, that's, hard. that's easy to see in hindsight. Yeah, it is. But did you realize that in real time, what did we have going on here? All right. Think about this scenario in real time. We had this nice big spacing in red. Okay. But then we went green, right? So it should immediately turn off our original bias and we're looking, oh, but then it went red. This red line right here, if you thought that old bias that was like, oh, you know, I'm, I go red, I got the space, green, and then it goes right red. Oh, yay, okay, I'm back to red again. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, everybody got that? No. All right, so what happens right here? In this case, instead, we got our nice red bias, but boom, we go green, then we go red, then we go green. Oh, this is, can you guys see what I'm saying here? This is the no-go zone. You would have saved yourself all kinds of pain of any kind of trade going in there, right? You might be thinking, oh, there's double dot greens in there. Look, leave them alone, okay? Those double dot greens are so tempting. It's even like triple dot greens. Now, they ended up, yes, ended up working out, but wait for it, <laughs> okay? Wait for it if possible. Again, this is for you know more sniper, sniper style trading if you need to catch that bias. And I will just tell you right now, you wanna change your PL. Just this one filtering mechanism is huge. So we get on the other side, we're going red, black, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then we finally get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars of space. Awesome. All right. Eight bar rule. That's a terrible eight. Let's see if I can do a better one. <laughs> All right. So we get our eight bars. Boom. Right here. What's our bias? We are now biased green right here. Everybody catch that? I hope you guys catch that. This is what you need to know for our system. The bias of the green long side position actually begins right here. Now, are we entering into a position immediately right here? No, what we wanna wait for is a perfect entry. See this little, little dot there, right there? Hopefully that correlates with lower time frame. I'm pointing over to other charts, lowest time frame, so we get a nice pinpoint entry location for ourselves. Hopefully that sets up real nice, and we get a trade right there. We start to get long. now shoot one bar of this is 10 ticks okay so let's say that you did catch one right here that's 10 that's 20 this is a 30 tick move right there can you make money on that you bet you can right so that's a trade that we want to be able to take on one of these so simple such a simple thing folks um but i needed to drive this home we are at 24 minutes with the extra time i hope you guys learned something from that if you guys have other questions pop those down in the comments below but this is what i want to go over here tonight on that MACV. I'm gonna go through a few more examples, but that's what you need to know right there. Make sure you've got notes. If you have any questions at this point, you should know what I'm talking about on all these. Let's go to the next example. Here we go. So red, gap of space, we already talked about it. Green. So we start the green right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on that bar right there. Perfect. Now this thing goes up one, two, three, four-ish bars. Take off some of that. Two times 13, even two bars. That's 20 six ticks right there for that spot right there Is that worth it i think so 26 ticks pretty nice opportunity in there let's say that there are no more even if you get one in right here turns around whoops red's showing up where do we actually say that we're looking for red one two three four five six seven eight all the way down here so we get the pullback up and in maybe we try to get short here probably not going to work right that's okay as soon as this area hits we know there's no bias we wait we already talked about this one right here Okay, you guys get it? Next. So over here to the left, we went green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a nice spot, isn't it? Double dot green, getting to get long. This one doesn't work out to be a winner, does it? Right? We're not just all coming out here showing all winners. But what's the, what's the loss on that? The loss on this is like three ticks, four ticks. Okay? So minus three ticks. Think about the, the winning opportunities that we've been talking about. 26 ticks. Even if you don't get the whole thing, if you don't get all 26, let's say you get 10 and 15 and 20. You see the ratios here, folks? three, four ticks a loss, 10, 15, 25 tick winners. This is how we consistently just turn over by playing this video game, but you gotta play the video game right. Know the rules, every great game has rules. Follow those rules, let the tools do the work, don't overthink it, just play what you see in front of you. Let's go back over here. This whole space, this is a pretty tricky day um, here today, and we're coming here, this is all end of day stuff. So let's get to the midday stuff and see what we found. Let's go around, I don't know, just round back, how about, uh, not three o'clock. Let's go to this is two. About right around the morning session. Can we go to the morning session? Oh, come on, charts. 
Coordinate. Cooperate with me. Oh, I've got 500 bars limit. Uh-oh, I hear the guy crying. Okay, folks, we're wrapping it up right here. For me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Monspot, and Curtis G. And the rest of the game, I'm sitting out the base town. See ya!